So we've talked about the fact that September is seasonally a very difficult month. And uh, so far, we're starting to see that pullback. Uh, we've got options expiration happening on Friday. Um, so that certainly could impact the market. Uh, but uh, during this episode, we're going to take a look at, are we going to get the bounce up off the support? Or are we going to get the breakdown below? So stick with me. My name is Brian Cannon, and welcome to Markets in 5. <music> So as we dive into it, you can see the trend line that we've been following for quite a while now in many, many episodes. And essentially, we want to see this trend line really hold up. We've gotten several nice uh, bounces off support here uh, back in March and uh, had a couple of tests of the, uh, the 20 and the 50 day uh, that successfully held up uh, most recently in July. And then uh, we had one in August as well. So here we are. We are really, really approaching that that area that's very crucial for us to hold, right? So we want to make sure that the, certainly the trend line holds, uh, but then also we want to make sure that that moving average, that red line right there is the 50 day moving average. So we've already crossed down below the 20 day moving average, which is okay, uh, but we just want to make sure that that 50 day average holds up because it's right in line with our trend line. So if we can't hold that channel trend and we break the 50, uh, it's going to be time to, to lighten up the risk a little bit and uh, more than likely raise a little bit of cash. We've looked at this chart several times in the past, but I think it's important to take a look at it again. So when we look at high yield performance relative to the S&P 500, if the relative performance of the high yield is starting to outperform the S&P 500, that's a warning sign historically. And uh, so as you can see, and, and again, we've gone through this chart several times, so I'm not going to go into the details, but just wanted to give you an update as to what we're seeing. So when that uh, relative performance begins to outperform, in other words, you're seeing the performance rise above the trend line down, uh, then, then that's something that uh, usually precludes a uh, pull down in the market. Now, when we look at this, we want to make sure that not only is that performance outperforming to the out upside, the, the relative performance, but we also want to see that break in the trend line. So we haven't quite seen the break in the trend line. Uh, again, we're getting close, but uh, you can see previously when that trend line was taken out and the relative performance was, uh, was going up, uh, it, it coincided with a major pull down. So we are starting to get a little kick up here in the, uh, the relative performance, uh, but we have not had that major break in the trend line yet. So uh, stay tuned and, uh, and, and we'll keep monitoring that. So the last chart I wanted to go through today is the S&P 500 on a weekly trend. So when you look at uh, anything on a weekly versus a daily trend, uh, it really tends to take out some of the, the noise or the chop. It takes out a lot of the the, 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 the chaos and, uh, and tends to smooth those lines out just a little bit. So when we look at the, uh, the lows off of the, uh, the 2009 uh, and then uh, look at the, you know, the, tr the trend line since then, I mean, you've seen this nice kind of healthy, you know, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low on a weekly trend. Of course, the uh, pandemic last year broke it down. Uh, and then V-shaped recovery right back uh, to all-time highs. But if you'll take a look at this upper trend line, uh, every time we've hit it in the past since 2009, uh, essentially uh, it, it was not able to hold it. So uh, we had a pull down uh, when we hit it um, back in uh, April of 2010 for a 17.65% pull down. We hit it again in uh, March of 2011, and we had a, almost a 20% pull down. Uh, and then you can see here over the course of uh, from February 14th, uh, February 2014, all the way to basically May of 2015, uh, it, it basically hit that line and bounced up and just kind of kept holding it. So uh, that was a nice, healthy uptrend. But then eventually when it couldn't, couldn't hold that upper trend line, it did break down for almost a 17% pulled back. So here we are right now at the very top end of that channel. What we're really looking for in this chart is, you can notice back here, it, it hit the upper trend line and, and couldn't hold it and fell, fell back down toward the middle. Same thing here. Now on this one, it, it kind of bounced around up top for a while before it broke down. So the question is, what will this one do? So are we gonna have a, a pullback that's gonna take us all the way back down to the middle of this, this channel chart? 
or <clears throat> is it going to, uh, to bounce around and, and continue to climb steadily? So as you can see, uh, again, September is a difficult month and uh, we're not quite sure yet if we're going to get the bounce up or if we're going to get the breakdown. But uh, stick with me in two weeks and we'll go into uh, what we're seeing at that point. Uh, but if you have any questions or uh, would like to discuss your situation, by all means, give me a shout. My name is Brian Cannon and we'll see you in the next Markets in 5. Mm -hmm.